did it um, fit with your own experience in the workplace? Yeah, um, actually, I've uh, been uh, coming to them for one year. Yeah. And, yeah, um, I actually feel in the second one, the second transition of the contract. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, okay. the reason why we fight. <laughs> All right, so there you go. It does definitely resonate with your experience. <laughs> motivation then, having a transactional contract is motivation. Actually, most people have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What do people think about that? Do you think that, that most people have this kind of contract? Because in recent years, not many people have the first one. Yeah. It's hard to get loyalty to a certain company. Yeah. Oh, that's really lucky. <laughs> So is there high turnover in your workplace? No, not really. So, so it's more about for you the personal fit. Yeah, isn't what it's you more like the um, how to shake out the contract, the second one, so the not. Yep, doesn't suit your personality. No, not really. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for that. that was My name is Quiet. As our lecture today is about managing self for success, and my article is putting people first for organizational success. After I finished um, reading this article, I like the sentence: uh, "Is people are our most important asset? People are our most important asset." Uh, in terms of management, it means that if um, if a firm um, if a firm focuses on people first, or they put workers at the core of firm's strategies, um, those workers will produce higher long long term returns for shareholders rather than um, the firms who do not apply um, this strategy and. As you can see here, uh, if firms do not focus on um, people first, uh, like they may, uh, for example, they may cut training, and therefore they will cut um, employees' skills and knowledge. Uh, in addition, uh, many firms they try to hire part-time or temporary, um, temporary employees. Um, this uh, this situation uh, lead to. And the firms will reduce motivation belong to uh, workers. Even though sometimes um, uh, those firms can reduce short-term costs, and um, the most effective um, uh, point here is that if um, um, the most effective the most effective um, point here is that uh, employees will pay lower attention on uh, customers. Therefore, they will make poor, you know, co poor customer services. As a result, this may affect uh, sales, profits, and cost of the company. Uh, as you know already, uh, at the first presentation, um, the, the seven practices for successful in uh, organizations, and um, if you can see the list of uh, seven uh, practices, and I will focus on, on uh, uh, practice uh, number five: extensive training. Because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I like it because um, uh, I think em employees' uh, skills and um, knowledge are uh, the most important for success of the. Organization, and um, it is because um, it is because um, employees with high skills and um, um, wide knowledge 
they, they, they often have high performance of, of, in, the work, uh, in the work system. And um, if they, if they uh, get, uh, if employees get extensive training, it's after that they can have ability to identify and resolve problems quickly and effectively. Uh, or they may take more advantage, uh, take more uh, responsibility for quality for the quality of products in the firm. And finally, I think training can be a source of competitive advantage. It's my presentation. So the paper. What's your opinion on the paper? What did you think of it? Um, after I uh, after I finished reading uh, this article, I think uh, what what we are learning today uh, doesn't mean we can apply uh, apply those things totally in the um, uh, real world in the future, and it means that um, uh, in the future. We may we may need to retrain, to apply new skills and to uh, widen our knowledge, because things change and and especially in this uh, this time because things change too fast. Yeah. If we have no retrain, no ex extensive training, we cannot um, afford to, to to contribute high result for the firm. service companies. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, being, I've been in service company, a lot of service companies, I find treating people as their assets will lower, dramatically lower its turnover rate. Yes. Yeah, and it'll increase its loyalty. But in a manufacturing point, a um, laboring point, I don't think it's really workable because of the high cost of actually putting this uh, view into place. Yeah, right. Um, uh, because because they they often think um, if they uh, if they train workers it may uh, it might it might create cost for the company but the fact that after 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 training uh, the employees might produce more value than its cost for the firm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In the service companies, it's really true because you need custom, better customer relations, you need more training and knowledge about the things you're doing, but in a manufacturing company, it's more of just doing the same thing over and over again. As long as you know how to do that efficiently, ah, <laughs> it's so, okay. So how do you know, how do you learn how to do it efficiently? It's most of the time when you employ someone in a manufacturing company, if you actually see it, they'll have a, a, a master, or yeah. sometimes, most of the time, they find people that has significant experience in yep. such a Yep. And actually go and train someone because but isn't that training? Cost. It's just not formalized. Yeah, training. it's not formalized, and their cost is way a lot lower. But it's still so training. So their view is, but the yeah. problem is the company's view wouldn't be focused on people as assets. That's what I'm saying. I it won't be focused on people as assets. Yeah. As so instead, it will be just employees. Yeah. Um, what what do other people think? I think this is a really interesting topic. Yeah. Because I'm working in the manufacturing before, so I'm kind. Of <laughs> I'm kind of with your, your idea because my uh, my brother's company is a manufacturing company. It's, it's like the first of its kind at my country. So they have to train every everyone coming in at the first time and they prefer to hire the, um, uh, how to say, just graduate students. Uh, that means the students just uh, graduate from the college or university. So they send them to the other country for the um, retraining or
it's mostly all the uh, lower levels of labor that can be done easily, where training is forgotten or not used properly. Um, what he mentioned was that your brother was a high tech company, right? Mm -hmm. High tech new manufacturing company is a new, new, new industry which is a, should be more different to compared to the regular manufacturing company that I'm talking about because the high tech ones, firstly, you do the employee you can't find experienced employees. You yeah. cannot find um, people that has knowledge over it. So you rather train them yourself, which will lower the cost. But that's only in places which is high tech. Mm -hmm. So you could say um, ma manufacturing companies of um, like softwares, right? Software uh, ROMs or all that. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, you need high training. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you have a company that's just maybe paper cutting, or yeah. a, a manufacturer that makes um, bottle caps, for example. It, you don't need um, a stanch, substantial knowledge of how this bottle cap is made, but may, just say you're in quality control, you just have to know that this bottle cap has some defects. Yeah, I, I think it's about the degree and, and quantity and level of training. Yeah, and sometimes, for example, for in the manufacturing company, yeah. they don't view people as assets, so they don't actually really care about your degree too. Yeah. They actually view, if you have a higher degree, they actually yeah. view you as a, something that's a, a liability. For yeah, them. well, you're overqualified for this Yeah, you're overqualified for this job, out. so I don't think you'll be happy with this job. Yeah. I'd rather not even employ yeah. you for that reason. Um, I think it's a really interesting perspective, and I think that... Um, uh, as, uh, in, in my opinion, which I know there's um, yeah, welcome other opinions, so if anyone would like to chip in here, I think that um, you're right in that less training is maybe required in some organisations, but I still think that there's training, and I think it's just that it's not always formalised, but this kind of mentor, supervisor, um, vicarious learning, so learning through modelling is still a recognition that people need to see how things are done. It's just, just different ways. But I also do think that the organisations that value their employees, whether they're putting them as their main asset is a different issue, but that value their employees, reduce their turnover, um, which is one of the biggest costs, both in terms of financial cost, but also in terms of knowledge and experience. But I get that not every organisation is going to put it at the same level as a six-month training program for their employees. There's going to be people that it's a lot more basic than that. But, yeah. Uh, um, just to mention, I think the world's leading company in viewing this as the most important thing is Walmart. Yep. It has the best training and it trains, like, even looks at a simple job of service and still makes it really hard. Yep. Which are still puts in a lot of money for them to train in such a way. That's why Walmart is so successful. Okay. Yeah, but even for Walmart, which is um, someone that's so focused in people asset, is now moving away from people asset as the most important thing. And even for Walmart, it, they're going into the integration of value chain and logistics okay. as the main focus. Which so, means? Which means this one is now second on the list, not the first. When we started with Sam Walker, this was the first on the list. Yeah. yeah. Which things start to change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, still, in, for the service companies, I reckon this is the most important, but still, yeah. my view is that manufacturing company is most of them. Yeah. Yeah. And for most companies, the bottom line is profit. Yeah. yeah. Most companies, mm -hmm. especially for manufacturing, the, the lowering of cost is the most important thing. Yeah. Excellent, thank you very much for your presentation. So we have one more. Oh, we've got two more. No, one more. Over back. Thank you.